Good morning, everybody. Hello, everybody. Bonjour. Um, I would very much like to welcome Madame Marie Claude Francoeur, the Delegate du Quebec, to our AAFLFC podcast. Appointed as Quebec's delegate to New England in May 2014, Madame Marie Claude Francoeur serves as Quebec's representative in Connecticut, Maine, Massachusetts, New Hampshire, Rhode Island, and Vermont. This is her second term in Boston. Madame Francoeur's career is one of public service, working to shape and promote Quebec's policies on francophonie, climate change, energy, transportation, and labor, both at home and internationally. You can follow her on Twitter at, at mcfranqueur or follow the Quebec government office in Boston at, at Quebec Boston. Madame Franqueur, welcome. I'm so delighted to meet you today. Uh, and I'm gonna now turn over the uh, interview to my dear colleague, friend, and fellow board member, Tim Beaulieu. Uh, Tim? Uh, bonjour, Madame Franqueur. Uh, je ne sais pas si je vous le dis, mais je prends maintenant des cœurs de français. Comment allez-vous aujourd'hui? Wow, Tim, bravo! Ça me fait plaisir de t'entendre parler en français. Merci de me recevoir aujourd'hui. C'est vraiment un honneur de participer au podcast de Lala FC une association qui travaille tellement fort, comme nous tous, à la promotion de la langue française et de la culture francophone aux États-Unis. Merci, merci. Uh, uh, so today, I'd like for our listeners to get to know you and your office um, and all the amazing work you're doing to promote the French language and francophone culture in New England. Uh, sometimes I think to myself that you're the best kept secret. Um, uh, <laughs> to, so uh, let's start by... Uh, Basically, what is the Quebec government office, or uh, as you say in Quebec, what does it eat in winter? <laughs> Merci, Tim. We do have a small but very mighty team. 2020 marked the 50th anniversary of Quebec's presence in New England. Our Boston office opened its door in 1970 in recognition of the region's importance as a neighbor and a partner in a wide array of sectors. We say neighbor and partner, but when we're talking about la francophonie, Quebec and New England are family. I'm not, I'm telling your listeners and viewers anything they don't know when we say that Quebec and New England share a border, we share the same air, the same soil, and the same DNA. Our official mandate is to foster economic, political, artistic, academic, and institutional exchange with the six New England states. How do we do that in real life <laughs> on a daily basis? Well, we do it through relationship building, partnerships and collaborations on both sides of the border. We act as a matchmaker, facilitating contacts and supporting you in developing lasting alliances. For our Francophonie partners, that might mean working with Le Centre de la Francophonie des Amériques or partnering with one of Quebec's 17 universities or collaborating with one of our local partners. Our Francophonie mandate is so important that we are the only office in the US that has a Francophone Affairs attaché, which you know very well, whom you know mm -hmm. very well, Marie-Josée, who um, uh, is the one who um, does all the work with the, the Francophone groups. We have established the position in 2013 because of the growing interest we could sense in the region to connect with the Franco-French-Canadian culture and heritage. We witnessed an increased number of requests for projects and activities aiming to promote and preserve our common heritage. So much of what we're doing has been um, dedicated. Well, we do have someone who is dedicated to Francophone affairs only, and that made sense. So Marie-Josée brings people together and coordinates Quebec's action in Francophonie through the region. She is really your best ally and will support you every step of the way from the inception of an idea to the ribbon cutting ceremony, uh, be it virtual or soon in person, I hope. To be clear, when we use francophonie, we mean it as a term that encompasses the French language, certainly, and also the francophone culture. I was listening to your recent podcast with Jesse Martineau, and he hit it right on the nail head. The Franco culture, Quebec culture, is not limited to the language. It is a huge part of it. And I will give you that, that we work really hard to promote and preserve it. 
It is also the music, the traditions, the foods, the expressions, and whatever shapes your Francophone identity. We wanna work with you all on all of these things. So let me give you a couple of examples of innovative collaborations that started with an idea, a dream, and became reality because of the quality of the relationship with our Quebec and American partners, and of course, the work of my incredible team. The New England Franco Route was established in the fall of 2017 as a way to discover the Franco-American heritage of our region and boost local tourism. The route links the towns of Woonsocket, Rhode Island, Lowell in Massachusetts, Manchester, New Hampshire, and Biddeford, Maine, and Lewiston, Auburn in Maine as well. This year, we added an interesting twist on the Franco route. It's called geocache. Do you know what geocache is, Tim? Absolutely. <laughs> Very briefly, geocaching is an outdoor recreational activity in which participants use a GPS to hide and seek containers called geocaches or caches at specific locations marked by coordinates all over the world. And there are millions of those. So the town on the Franco route will have hidden objects in strategic places. As they look for the treasures, the participants will learn about the history of French Canadian. It is very stimulating and interesting. The route went live on May 21st and tons of people already joined. What a fun way to learn and engage with our culture. Another one is puts in fest, and no one knows better than you, Tim. I remember when you first knocked on our door on, in 2016 to pitch this great revolutionary idea of a puts in fest. Look how much it has grown. Even in the pandemic, it has been a huge success. Yeah, so I, I remember um, coming to your office to secure, you, you're the first gold sponsor of the event, um, and just, just a crazy, we, we knew that it was gonna do something. We knew people were interested. It's just amazing to see so many folks interested in, in uh, you know, the Francophone culture that in New England's history. And then obviously how special of a food Poutine is to Quebec and as our neighbor to have an event that kind of shares our, our, like you had said, our, our bonds between the two, the air and the soil and things like that. So it's pretty cool. But um, so just kind of get back. It's, it's, you know, it's very fascinating with the activities that, that you have going on and, and that you're recently supporting. Um, so what are you currently working on? Well, one of the easiest ways you can use our services is to request a presentation on Quebec for your group. Marie-Josée has done countless of them in person and virtually on a lot of topics. So Quebec culture, Quebec history, Poutine history, of course. And yes, we have a lot about Poutine. The presentations last anywhere between 30 and 60 minutes, and it's very interactive. They are extremely popular for French classes. Marie-Josée adapts the presentation for every grade and skill level, and also with associations such as the Alliance Française or your local chapter of the AATF. Earlier, I mentioned being the benchmark between Quebec and the region. An example of that is a project we did in 2019 called Cinema, Cuisine et Confidence, hmm. which was a collaboration between Portland, Maine and the Charlevoix region in Quebec. A Quebec film was presented and the chefs from Portland and Charlevoix cooked together several small meals inspired by the film. It was a great way to discover Quebec cinema and gastronomy. And we are working on a second edition. As you know, June is the Pride Month. This year, we have decided to focus on members of the Francophone LGBTQ plus community. We will be hosting a webinar themed Diversity Out Loud conversation with LGBTQ Francophone artists with speakers from Quebec, France, and Belgium. Another important part of our advocacy for French language and Franco culture is the celebration de la Francophonie en Nouvelle-Angleterre or the Francophonie celebration that take place annually in March. Together with our local partners in Francophonie, both government and community partners, we organize events throughout New England celebrating our common heritage. This year, even if in a completely virtual world, our office was involved in 15 projects. From webinars and Quebec movie screening to food tasting and live concerts, we covered a lot of ground from our living room. To give you an example, we hosted a number of activities with partners in different states on common interests. In Maine, we focused on food. We had a webinar with chef from local restaurants talk about the influence of the French heritage of the region on their cuisine. We also partnered with a restaurant called Chaval in Portland. 
they developed a cabanasuk menu for takeout using Quebec food products like pork, ducks, and dare I say maple syrup. People could watch a live concert from an Acadian band from the comfort of their home while enjoying a scrumptious meal. In Vermont, our webinar focused on ways the local tourism industries have put in place to attract Francophone tourists. When you think about it, in 2017, 1.2 million Quebecers visited New England, spending almost $500 million in the local economy. That's a big market. Finally, in Massachusetts, we focused on science and hosted a panel showcasing the contribution of French-speaking regions, Quebec, France, and Belgium, in the fight against COVID-19. And that is just in New England. Our 33 offices around the world celebrated La Francophonie with over 150 events. Wow. Uh, so uh, Quebec National Day is around the corner on June 24th. Um, so what do you all have in store? Well, we're working on a great line uh, of activities. The 117th Grand Show for Quebec National Day, which we refer to as Le Grand Spectacle, will be virtual once again. This year's theme is Tissé Serré, which loosely translated as tightly woven or tightly knit. The theme really inspired us for our own activities. First, our nine US offices and our delegation in Mexico have joined forces to host a series of online cooking shows. Our head of toast are opening up their kitchens. The classes are led by Chef Dominique Sylvain and one of them by our delegate general in Mexico, Madame Alar Gomez, who in addition to being a head of toast is a marvelous chef. The classes will feature local recipes with a Quebec twist to show our close relationship. The first one is on June 14th. Check out our website for all the details. Join us for one, join us for all. There is nothing like a kitchen party, am I right? <laughs> so on June 25th, the Quebec band Janti Corum, which is traditional music, will host an online concert with our friends at the Blackstone River Theater. This should be a great time. We are also hoping to showcase associations that promote the French language and or the Franco-American culture and heritage on our Facebook page throughout the month. As I said at the beginning, our role is to bring people together, and we thought what better way to introduce all of our partners to each other than giving them a shout out on our social media platform. Reach out to marie Jose if you'd like to be featured. We would love to see you. Wow, uh, nice. Sign me up for all these. Um... So what would you say are some of the key elements to raise awareness and promote our common heritage and language? Well, I think that key elements for successful events and initiatives include partnerships and, and a virtual component. Um, in the past year, we really have discovered the importance of partnering together, pooling our resources and talents to offer quality programming with a wider reach. As we emerge from this pandemic, I think keeping a virtual component or a self-guided option uh, you know, when we think of the Tinfest, for example, it will be key. Hybrid events will allow for the personal connection that we have all been craving, but virtual self-guided component is such a benefit to reach, educate, interest more people, either because they're not physically in our region or because they are not ready to resume in-person events. It also allows us to have experts speak out at our events who otherwise wouldn't be able to travel for a one-hour talk. Or me, for instance, I can be speaking in Montreal in the morning, Maine at lunch, and Rhode Island by early afternoon, although the magic, all through the magic of technology and with zero carbon emissions. So as you see from all these activities, including the Franco Route and the Poutine Fest, the March celebrations, we touch on several areas, even in, Fran in French speaking countries, not only language per se. We're promoting the language, the heritage, the culture, and we're also demonstrating how francophonie can be used as a vector for economic development in a wide area of sectors. And that is crucial for our advocacy. What is in it for the region? Well, why should our institutional and government partners be interested? Why should they invest? Well, because it generates regional wealth, be it through tourism, culture, trade, science, and of course, innovation. Wow, well, I, I obviously agree with all that. Um, wonderful. So how can we stay in touch with you, Mary Claude? Oh, we would love to hear from you and don't hesitate to reach out. So you can follow us on Twitter or Facebook 
at Quebec Boston on both platforms and make sure to reach out to Marie-Josée with all your ideas. As I mentioned before, no idea is too small, no dream is too big. Please do get in touch. We can't wait to hear from you. And certainly we are so much looking forward to seeing you in person very soon. Awesome. Merci, thanks so much for your time today. It is my pleasure. Thank you for having me and Bonne Fête Nationale du Québec. <laughs> Thank you so much, Madame Francoeur, for having joined us today. And merci infiniment pour tout ce que vous faites. À la prochaine. À la prochaine. Merci beaucoup.